Hey everyone, Lena here. I just wanted to explain that this week's audio is a compilation video of the previous Yandere Elf audios. Now the reason why is that a Patreon exclusive audio is actually for the Yandere Elf series. However, I cannot post it to YouTube since it's a little bit on the, uh, not a little bit, but it is definitely on the spicy side. Anyways, if you guys are interested in the spicy audio, feel free to check out the Patreon. It's not necessary, though. What is necessary is for you to have a good day. Or else. Bye bye Human, why are you here? This forest is forbidden for your species. You know you are trespassing. Be silent, human. We must choose what we will do with you. Feroz. Noroz. We will take you to our queen, human. And she will determine your punishment for setting foot into these woods. You knew you should not have come. So now you must face the consequences of your crimes. If you are a spy of the human armies, your life will be cut short. If you are not, she will know what you are. Her magic is the strongest of us all. And if she wishes to know who and what you are, she can find out before you can strengthen your mind to keep her out. Now, stand up and move, human. We will not tolerate slack. I'm quite sure that if the humans can be stopped around the Hollow Pass a few more times, they will give up on that position. If they do, we can begin a counterattack there. You have a point, but do not forget that humans have less resistance to attacks in the woods. Their platoons can be driven apart, and with demonic steel arrows, we have no need to fuss about their armor. The magic will pass through their metal, and the charm spells will work as intended. Each human that we can charm is another warrior for our cause. If we can simply get them to understand that they cannot fight us in the woods, they might try to burn down the ancient groves. The Dryads will be forced to defend themselves, and you know how powerful they can be. Spurgins, Aluruns, even the Treants will be forced to fight alongside us. With their powers and ours combined, we can push the humans back with ease. My queen, we bring you a human who dared to trespass into the ancient groves. They were found in a snare trap halfway into the Hollow Pass. We brought them to you because they do not look as though they are part of the human occupation force. But we were suspicious of the fact that they were so deep in the woods. We did so, in fact, that you could shed your great light on this question and dedicate some time on telling us the punishment for this human's crime. Erata, keep the human here and let the rest of your hunting band have their rest. I will conclude my business with the general before I discuss this matter. To where have the humans progressed when it comes to the western territories? Have they managed to take Farbante? Hmm. I wouldn't have expected dwarves to allow the humans to take one of their cities so easily, even if they are so inferior. They are stubborn at the least. Do you perchance know if the humans and dwarves have struck an alliance? 
Dwarves fire could do solid damage to the woods before they can respond. And if the mountain folk unleash the dragons they are allied with, it could mean our demise. Send three scouts to find out then. Let them disguise themselves as humans. Send reinforcements to the pass and the north, and we will see when the humans realize they cannot compare to the elves in their natural homes. If their king is wise, he will give up these foolish ambitions. If he wishes for an all-out war, we will summon the aid of the beast folk and the harpies. If we must, our last resort will be the demons. We can fend them off, but a war against mankind cannot be waged from a defensive standpoint. Now, with those orders, let me continue to the next matter that was brought to me. Stand up, human. The queen wishes to see you. Now, little human. These woods you have found yourself in have been the homes of the elves since the beginning of time. We planted these trees. My great-great-grandmother was the one who sowed the seeds that created the palace of wood and nature that we stand in. The trees and the elves have lived together in perfect peace and humans wish to cut them down in order to use them to create homes. We have guarded these groves since they were first threatened by your kind. And if I can find within your mind any intent to even attempt to down a single plant or animal in our territories, your punishment will be severe. Now, I will place my hands on your ears and invade your mind. Resistance is useless, for your kind is too weak in the arts of magic to bring up the required effort to force someone with my level of power out of your thoughts. Now kneel before me, and we shall see if you pass. Let us see. What do you have in this little mind of yours, human? Hmm? Wandering into the woods without a reason. It seems you really did not know this was the home of the elves. Let's see what happens when we go back further. A village. Humans laughing. Why were you sad, human? It appears to be a festival. I understand festivals to be a place and time for fun, not to shed tears. Another human. I can feel your emotions toward them. Afraid, yet attracted. Ara, your thoughts are so interesting, human. Let's go back a bit further. This feels... different. What time have we come to, human? You are young here. Very young. That man is wearing quite a lot of dark colors. Is he a priest? Or perhaps a necromancer? Who are the names he is calling out? The Rot. What is the Rot, human? Ah, a dark disease, spread by touch. And if the humans of this rot were your parents, then it would be inevitable for them to have touched you while infected. Tell me, is this why you are so sad? You are immune of your own blood, but still carry the rot to this day. That must be a difficult life. Not allowed to touch anyone, lest they die by your hand. I have seen enough.
human. You've trespassed into these woods in despair and unknowingness. You are no spy, nor an enemy of the elves. The rot you carry in your veins appears to be a great curse you have dealt with your whole life. I can feel it festering just beneath your skin. But I can also feel something else. Each place I touched you in, the disease backed away. Not simply from my touch, but from my magical aura. The rot appears to be disease, worded off by magic passively. So therefore I have chosen your punishment for trespassing. You will stay within our great woods for the rest of your life where your curse has no effect. You harbor no ill will towards our society, and therefore I believe you are of no risk to us. Therefore, I will adopt you as my consort. You will be treated as one of us, but if you attempt to run from me, you will be hunted down and returned to me. My lady, with all due respect, but this mere human can't be your consort. They are of a lesser species, and a species that is taking us under siege no less. To marry one of them would be a greatly controversial act, to say the least. Oh, my dear guard, I will not have this human killed, nor taken away from me. They are mine beginning this instant, and they will be treated as no less than an elf in their full right. Controversy is the least of my concerns. I refuse to even consider the possibility that somebody might take them away from me. Now, my guard, you will go outside and spread the word that my humans to be treated with all the honor that becomes of them. They are mine, you hear me. I... I understand, my queen. I apologize for questioning you. I will spread the word across town. My general, you are dismissed as well. I wish to be alone with my human. Now, my human, you do not have to fear. I will ensure nobody here comes close to you if you do not want them to. You are mine, and mine alone now. Why, yes, I can carry you like this. Elves are naturally stronger than humans, even though our physique seems lighter and more graceful. Our muscles are enhanced with magic, meaning we can lift things well above our own weight without so much as flinching. I'm taking you to my bedroom. You are my consort, after all. You'll be treated like royalty from now on. The servants will learn to make your favorite dishes. The guards will protect you wherever you go. Not that you'll be moving very far from me. After all, this is your punishment. You'll be my little human, never far away, and don't even try to run. If any of my subjects see you without your guards, or see you do anything suspicious, they will tell me, and I will send my best hunters to catch you and return you to me. Do not be afraid of me. I will treat you as you deserve. If you're good and obedient, you'll be spoiled and treated with honor. But if you disobey me, I might have to hurt you. Now, get on the bed. I have to get a few things out. You see, us elves have the natural ability to be one with the forest. And especially in this palace made of branches and woods entwined into a great cathedral 
of nature. Our powers can be used to create virtually anything from the growth of plants. So when I hold out my hands and use my magic to request something from the forest, it will respond. There we go. Vines enchanted with deep magic to stop them from snapping, to make them harder than your steel, but more comfortable to wear than the finest silk. Forged into ropes and a collar so I can chain you and tie you to my bed. You'll be in this room for as long as I want you to be. You're mine. In body and soul. I've seen your every thought, your every memory. I know everything there is to know about you. You've gone through so much, and you've lived with the curse of the rot since you could remember. But that curse is a blessing to me, because it means that no human can come to save you. If they do, it doesn't matter if my guards stop them or I stop them. If they so much as dare touch you, the rot will keep you safe for me. Now, sit still as I tie this vine around you. There you go. You'll be good for me, won't you? You'll be right here, where I want you to be. And the truth is, as soon as I delved into your mind, I knew everything you were. I knew you just wanted to be loved and held. And I can do that for you. Because every second that passes, I want you more. And the greatest thing is that nobody will keep me from taking you. I am the queen of the elves, and they dare not question me. The humans may want to capture our territory, but as fierce as I will fight to keep them from taking it, I will fight to protect you. You remember that girl at the festival? Tomorrow I will send someone to find her, so she may be punished for what she said to you. Every person who has ever wronged you will be taken into the forest and punished accordingly. You are one of my subjects now, and if someone dares wrong one of my subjects, now or in the past, they must be punished. You look so adorable just laying there in bed as I tie you up. I remember learning a few techniques from the Queen of the Spider Folk. You'll never escape my grasp, but I can hear your thoughts. I know that you're not even considering running away from me. <laughs> now how would you like it if I kissed you, my human? Hello, human. I was instructed by the queen to take care of you today. She is preparing to go to the battlefield and wants to make sure you are well taken care of. I have taken food with me, which has been prepared by the palace cooks. And I'll free you of your chains so that you can eat. Fial. There. You've been released. Now eat up. 
No, I'm not all right. But it's not like I get a say in the matter. And sharing my doubts about this situation with you does not help anyone in the slightest. I'm not going to just tell you, human. Our queen will reach into your mind and know what I said to you. And at that point, I'll be in trouble for treason. No, I'm going to tell her myself once I've made a proper argument. What I can let you know is that once you're done eating, the queen has asked me to take you to the settlement and have you fitted with new clothes and everything you need. She made a list of errands, and I will do each of them. But if you struggle for even a second, I'm going to bring you straight back here and put the bindings on you, then just drag you around everywhere. Understood? Yes, I am more roughly built than the queen. What a polite way of putting it. For a human. I'm the captain of the Queen's Guard. I was trained almost since birth. Of course I look more muscular and broad. That's because I am. She needs only concern herself with learning spells and skills that are beneficial to a Queen. And I only need concern myself with combat utility. Strength, dexterity, the ability to heal myself. Blade enchantments, combat training. That's what I do all day when I'm not babysitting a human who won't live to see a third digit to their age. Don't think about it too hard. Your little brain might break. Stand up. Follow me. I'm taking you to the tailor to get you sorted with some new robes. The queen wants you to wear the colors of the household at all times, instead of those rags you humans call clothes. The royal tailor uses dried or silk to create clothes, hardened with the willing gift of sap from the forest. Incredibly light, incredibly strong. A scarf made in that way can be both a shield and a weapon. And since she wishes to clothe you in nothing but that, I suppose normal human weapons will barely harm you. I'm not going to tell you what else is on the list. Some things I have to do myself. Some things involve you as well. Now be quiet. It's bad enough that I have to drag you around all day. Your constant questions make it annoying. Here we are. The tailor will make you a fresh set of clothes and take your measurements so she can make more. While I am off to do some errands I mention. Listen to what she says. Do not talk to her. She will only speak to tell you what to do. And I'll be back before she's done. Now do as I said, and be obedient. When I'm back, I'll tell you where we go next. Human, what is all of this? These scars on your back, I mean, they look like fallen petals of trees etched into your skin. Turn around. On your chest and legs as well. Where did you get these scars, human? Dwarven flame pots? Dragon fire? A battle with a monster? This is the rot? The queen spoke of this, but... Is it pulsing? 
It looks like it's alive. How can that be? I thought it was a disease. Explain to me this very instance, human. I have never encountered anything like this. You don't know either. Then I will take you to the healer. Maybe she can understand what's going on. I apologize, dear Taylor. I did not mean to disturb. I was simply shocked at the sight of the human's affliction. Please continue your work. So I heard Queen mumble something about a girl and a festival. When she was looking into your mind. Do you want to talk about that? Because I know she's sending one of my most trusted scouts to your old village. With a very specific mission. And I think we both saw how she got when she was done in your mind. An old bully. Well, you already had this many scars of this size. <sighs> of course, I forget. Human society functions differently. I don't know if you'd understand why, but we elves honor those who have gone into battle. We have tools for measuring the size of the scars. The greater the total size of your scars after a battle, the more honor and respect you gain. If sufficient, the size of your scars also permits you to stop going to battle, if you wish. Some elves stop as soon as they can, Others prefer to stay on the front line and gather more scars. But with scars the size of yours, you'd come in quite high, above even certain noble ladies and commanders. In addition, I'm not sure what to think of the fact that your scars are alive. Does it hurt when they pulse like that? Well, I suppose a scar that delivers pain periodically is more honorable to bear than a simple scar that fades over time. I must apologize to you, human. Perhaps you are worthy of my respect after all. Thank you kindly, dear Taylor. Now follow me, human. We will meet the healer to see what this disease of yours actually is. When did your scars develop, human? Were they with you since you were a child? Or did they develop over time? Are they growing? Does their color ever change? I I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was getting so excited. You don't have to answer my questions if you don't want to. I'm just very interested in your scars. Hmm? If I had to estimate, mine are about a quarter the size of yours. We haven't measured yet, though, so it might be a third. One-fifth, then. What else can you tell us about the rot, dear healer? A creature of its own. So, in that case, the human would be the one carrying the creature. Which is why the rot can't kill them. Because if the human dies, the rot dies with it. Can it be grafted, given to someone else? That would kill the human. 
then that's not an option. No, it's not healer. The queen wishes for the human to stay alive. The ceremony has not taken place yet, but she will take them as a consort. And she said to me that they will carry the full rights of an elf. Yes, I know. But don't speak it aloud. Treat the human with the decency you would show a guest. Not as you would a normal human. You saw their scars, at the very least, that should command respect. Now, is there anything else you can tell us? I believe the Queen spoke of its aversion to magic as well. I suppose that's why it took root within a human. They have the least average magical potency of all the races. Dwarves might survive on constitution alone. And more savage folks make up for it by being made partially of magic. Only humans have a small enough supply in their body for the rot to not be affected by it. Thank you, dear healer. You have helped me understand the human's condition. Now, we must continue on our errand. Unhand them. They are the queens and the queens only. By authority of her royal majesty, if you lay your hand upon them one more time, you will face punishment. Come, human. We must meet the queen now. She is awaiting you in the armory. She is in the armory because she will be going to the battlefield soon. I believe I told you this morning. But she will be leaving you here where it's safe. She will aid the troops at the Hollows Pass so that the humans won't make their way into the forest. But before we go to meet her, I'm going to give you these. I picked them up while you are being tailored. These are enchanted pieces to be placed onto your ears. When you do, a small illusion spell will cover them. And it will look as if you have the ears of an elf. In addition, they will inform the queen of your location. If you ever get lost, kidnapped, or taken away, she will know immediately. If you run away and take them off, she'll also know. So keep them on, even when you sleep. They won't feel painful, so do not be worried about taking certain sleeping positions with them. They may seem like they're made of normal steel, but they are fashioned from demonic steel. Yes, demonic steel. Enchanted and forged by demons. And traded for with lotus flowers. Demons treat them as numbing substances. Drugs, to put it bluntly. We trade them the flowers for the steel. It's a mutually beneficial trade. And nobody owes the other anything. Demonic steel is incredibly useful due to one of its mayor properties. It's partly ethereal. It can pass through objects as if they were air. But not through flesh. That's why we always send several elves to pick up the new shipment of steel. Because each bar needs to be carried and we wouldn't be so barbaric as to make a flesh cart to carry the steel. Now, let me place these onto your ears. There. You look like a proper elf now. And an honorable one at that. Now, let us go to the armory.
Ah, oh, my darling human. There you are. I hope my guard has been kind to you today. My lady, may I speak about something? Of course, dear Avranta. What do you wish to speak about? I took the human to have their scars measured. Scars? I haven't seen them yet. What's their class? Ele Ethari class, my queen. They're in the Ele Ethari class. Isn't that three classes above the Atale class you find yourself in, Arata? Yes, my lady, but that is not what I wish to speak about. The scars are painful to them. They writhe, and their coloration is abnormal. The rot is not a simple disease, as the healer told me. They aren't simply an immune carrier. Let us speak about this later. The human is right here with us. We will speak of it tonight. Now... My dear human, I must say you look gorgeous in the clothes given to you. Are they comfortable? Do they scratch your skin anywhere? Wonderful. Now I must tell you that I must leave for a few days. My guard likely told you about the Hollow's Pass already. And you overheard my conversation with my commander yesterday. To put it simply, I have to stop your kind from capturing the pass. It's of strategic value, beyond any doubt. I will leave you in the arms of the Royal Guard. But before that happens, there will be a ceremony. We will draw blood from each other. And at that point, you will become a consort of mine. The ritual is being prepared as we speak. And tomorrow, in the early morning, we will be joined. With a bit of my blood in your bloodstream, you will gain access to a spark of magic. And when I return, I will teach you. You will be my eternal consort, my student, my very own human, forever. Human, are you awake? Wake up, my love. It's time. Yes, it is time for the ritual indeed. I trust the earpieces are comfortable. If they hurt at all, you should tell me immediately. Yes, I'm still awake this late at night. Partially because we have to get ready for the ritual... Partially because I couldn't sleep. Well, darling, the reason I couldn't sleep is because I was thinking about the war that's being forced upon me by the human king. Of course, he could be trying to make his way to the heart of the forest, trying to get the wood here to build more settlements. But why would he? I mean, there's bountiful wood in his own kingdom. He has no reason to fell the trees my ancestors planted. Well, if he's not trying to get our wood, we only have two other resources he might want. The steel we trade with the demons, or the elves themselves. If he wants demonic steel, he could have sent a messenger asking to trade it with us. 
But if he's after the elves themselves, that leaves us with a much bigger problem. Wouldn't accept a situation where the elves are extinct, nor one where we get enslaved. So I have to do whatever I need to in order to stop him. No cost too great. Well, that's where you come in, but that's a discussion for later. For now, you need to get out of bed. I know it's quite comfortable. But you'll have to get out in order to be truly bound to me. <laughs> there you go. Good job, darling. Now follow me, and we'll go to the terrace above the palace, where we can see the moon. The ritual is quite a simple ordeal. But its importance is incredible. It's been performed between humans and elves multiple times. Mostly when an elf intends to marry a human. It involves drawing each other's blood, using a magical knife crafted by the cooperation of my grandmother and the demon queen herself. While it has the power to complete the ritual of binding to any human, to any monster, it's only ever been used by the elves. Once a cut is made on both wrists, the two partaking in the ritual hold each other's arm, bringing the wounds into contact and mixing the blood into their bloodstreams. Under the light of the moon, the monster then casts a spell, which heals both of them, and creates a thin layer of skin in between the wounds. Once this layer is formed, a kiss is shared, and a part of the essence of the human flows into the monster, and vice versa. From there on out, you need a new name. Why do you need a new name? Well, that's a peculiar question to answer. You see, human culture understands only partially how the body works. If I'm correct, you divide it into two parts, the physical body and the soul, correct? Well, we elves are much more advanced, and we have the... as far as I can tell... Seven separate elements of the self separated. Not two. Seven. The list is simple. Body and soul, of course. The body is a tool, and using that tool leads to scars. A body without scars is a body that hasn't truly seen life yet, and as such, barely deserves respect. You know the positive consequences that has for you already. The soul can control the body and backwards. It's the consciousness, the self with a capital S. The soul captures thoughts and logical processes, but it's immaterial. It can access other realms through dreaming. And then there's the shadow. Your shadow is a separate entity that is controlled by your body, but is also controlled by your name. Your shadow represents the impact you have on the world. Some elves have lighter shadows than others, and that is reflecting a life lived in pursuit of good. Fourth is the desires. It does what you think it does, distracting the soul from time to time, but also informing it of what the soul wants. After all, a soul is purely logical. Emotions mainly come from the desires. That, of course, means that all of my desires have focused themselves on you, my love. 
Then there is the magic. Your magic is an unseen reservoir of magical potential with which you can cast spells. Some species have more innate magic than others, like elves. It slowly recharges, never truly running out. The sixth is life force. It's much like magic, but it's a reservoir of life instead. Slowly waning like an hourglass. At the end of your life, the life force is drained completely. But that only happens if you die of old age. If you die of a weapon, that life force remains inside of you and can flow into everything around you. And last, but the thing you have asked me about, is your name. Your name represents all that you are and ever will be. It is the culmination of you, with a capital Y. Your name cannot die until it is no longer remembered by anyone. If someone knows your name and takes it from you, it gives them power over you. But a name is not chosen by your parents, nor by you. No, your name is chosen for you by one of the gods. Some species let the sun name them. Others let the earth. Some choose thunder, some the sea or even the souls of the dead. But we elves, we let the moon choose. It is the most sacred of our rituals to be named. And thus, it's only natural that you will be getting a name from the moon. My own name is spoken as Yandere and it means the Loving Queen. Rata, Captain of the Guard, has the meaning of Warrior Who Guards the Eternal Flower, and your name we'll find out later. It's a beautiful thing. The ceremony of receiving your name from the moon. Why the moon? <laughs> Well, that's because of the goddess who represents the moon. You might know it, but Artemis is the goddess of the hunt and the one who guards the forests. We, the elves, are all part of the huntresses. She helped grant us our gifts, separating us more distinctly from our fey brothers and sisters. And she did that to grant us our purpose. We guard these forests, and we have done so since the beginning of our existence. Our dark elven relatives were made by the corruption of the Demon Queen seeping in, and they took root in the Underdark, where they have built a society separate of ours. A dark elf is different from an elf as a human is from a frog. That's why we call them drow, because the title of elf is reserved only for those who follow the guidance of Artemis and the moon. She is our patron goddess. She took part in creating us. My role as queen is to rule the elves in her absence. And should she ever return, I am just as subservient to her as any elf. We do have other gods, yes. The Pantheon is the same as yours. Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, the Olympians, Titans for before that, and spirit gods for before the Titans. But there are a few differences, you see. 
The worship of Zeus has gone long out of fashion here. The god of lightning and thunder is dishonorable. Going down to earth and forcing himself on women and men alike, leading to countless wars and murders, and intense suffering. In all fairness, it's quite a problem each time. So we feel he is unworthy of being worshipped at all. In all fairness, his brother Hades is much more deserving of the attention. Poseidon took a dozen or more wives, but Hades has one wife, to whom he has stayed loyal. The last time a child was born of Hades was never. We respect that. He took his wife from the surface against her will, but made her see the truth of the matters. And then he let her choose if she wished to love him or not. That's much more honorable than the other two great gods. But I believe this is nothing you've never heard before. So, <laughs> that's that. Oh, we're almost at the top of the trees. Do you feel ready? Good. Because I feel excited, too. I can't wait for us to be bound together by fate, under the light of the moon, darling. Don't be afraid, darling. They don't have the power to stop us from joining. They're here to bear witness to the ceremony and nothing else. Come here. Let me give you one last hug before we begin. <clears throat> there. Better? Good. Now, all you have to do is stand there and say yes, and your name when I ask it of you. Ready? Welcome all to the ceremony of betrothal. In my hands I hold the Ishmat, the great dagger gifted to us by the demon queen to marry an elf to a human. I... Yandere, your queen and high priestess of the moon and grand sorceress of the ancestral woods, stand here with this human to perform the ceremony. We will conjoin, and my essence will flow into them until they are, by the magic in their spirit and the blood in their veins, an elf like us all. First, you place the knife on your hand. It'll hurt a little bit, but it'll be all over soon, my dear human. And we do the same with my own hand. And then we put our hands together. Did I speak the spell? And with this, you are elf and human alike, able to speak our language and your own. You can feel the layer of skin healing rapidly around our conjoined hands, can you not? That's a spell taking effect. Slowly but surely, you're gaining access to all that an elf is, in addition to what a human is. Your lifespan is expanding without limiting your adaptability. And most of all, your magical potential has become true. 
your magical reserves are filling themselves as they siphon out of mine. But fret not. My magic will return to me very quickly. And now, with the binding spell complete, you'll be mine forever. Turn to face the moon and accept your new name as one of us. An elf. Only you can hear your true name, but you will also hear the name everyone else hears. Gaze upon the moon and see Artemis's glory. Let her gaze into you. You are the rotten child. You are the touch of death. Askeli Ed. Is the name those around you know? Ask Eli Et, the eternal rotten flower. But your true name. Your true name is Hadref Had. Death covers death. Now rise as one of my children. Ask Eli Et. Rise and join your new brothers and sisters. But heed my warning. Death covers death. Your time to go is soon. And when you do, your death might bring disaster to this world or endless, everlasting beauty. Take the right choices. Do not let your curse be what you leave behind on this mortal realm. Artemis has spoken. The name of my consort will be Ask Eliet, the eternal rotten flower. An elf in their own right. And bearing scars of the champion beyond the forest class. They are, by all measures, an honorable member of our society now, and as such can wander around as they wish. I'll kneel before the eternal rotten flower. Do not worry, my darling. You'll still be here forever, even though you are free to wander the city. You are mine, after all. But you'll have more freedom than before. See it as a reward for being good and a perk of our union. Do you feel the magic flowing through your veins? You should be able to cast some simple effects soon. If you practice a bit, all you'll need to do is have faith in yourself, and I'm sure you'll make progress very quickly. I know you will, because you're mine, my eternal rotten flower.